Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video, we are going to be continuing with the novel Earthman Come Home by James Blish. It is the third novel in his Cities in Flight series. And this is part three. For the first two parts of this novel and the first two books in the series, there will be a link to a playlist at the end of the video. Before we begin, please subscribe, comment, and like. And now, part three of Earthman Come Home. Amalfi, Hazelton, and Dee went to the city of the man they called the Oki King, the man who seems to be in charge. Once they got into the city, they found out that the name of the city was Budapest. They went to a palace in the center of the city where they met with other Okis that were coming from other cities. Once they entered the portico, a man came up to Amalfi and got his attention. He was the mayor of Dresden, Saxony. He wanted to introduce himself because the time may come when they may need each other's help. At this time, no one knew the name of the city that Amalfi was the mayor of. He wanted to keep that secret for a little while longer. When Amalfi finally saw the king who was standing in the throne room of the palace, he came to the conclusion that that man had overthrown the rightful mayor some time ago. One could see that he was the one in charge because while everyone else was looking for someone to blame, he was able to shout them all down and take control. Amalfi, Hazelton, and Dee pushed their way to the front. There they saw the king. He was telling everyone how it was because of him that they were able to organize and get better bids. When the king noticed them and paused, Amalfi told him basically to put up or shut up. When the king asked them who they were, Amalfi said that he's the mayor of the only city to hold the line. Amalfi went on saying that they are the biggest city and the newest city here. And now that they see how the kings run things, they believe that he's doing a bad job. He then demanded to know what the king's plan was to get them out of this fix that they're in. The king's plan was to send out a direct message to all of the Oki cities so that they could organize a march on Earth and when they get to Earth, demand that the Earth government take care of this monetary policy that has gotten them into this fix. Amalfi told the king that many of the cities here in the jungle have violations of Earth against them and if they were to go to Earth, they'd probably get arrested. How is he going to protect them? And the mayor of Dresden backed up Amalfi. So the king then turned to Amalfi and said, let's hear your plan. Amalfi's plan was to organize and band together and put together their technical and scientific abilities, come up with new technologies, and then sell that to the planets. Amalfi went on to say that it will take two to five years and they'll have it tough, but they have it tough now. But when it's over, they'll be able to write their own tickets anywhere in the galaxy. Again, the mayor of Dresden sided with him, but the king did not. He said that five years is a long time to wait. He went on to say that cops work against single cities, but if a thousand cities marched on earth, the cop wouldn't be able to do anything. You could see that the king was rallying the crowd to his side. That's when the mayor of Dresden, who was on Amalfi's side, demanded a vote. That's when he asked John who he was, and John gave him his name, but he still didn't give him the name of the city. And that upset Hazelton, because Hazelton knew that if the crowd knew that John was the mayor of New York City, they would have been on his side. So when Hazelton asked him why he didn't just tell them so he could win, John replied that he came here to do exactly what he did, and that now it's time for him and D to get out of here. So while the voting was going on, all three of them made their escape. And just before Amalfi made his escape, he met up with the mayor of Dresden and gave him a clue so that he would know who the city was that he was mayor of. Amalfi's goal was to turn the march to earth into a stampede. Once the mayor got back to his rooms in the Empire State Building, Hazelton came to see him. Hazelton came to see him because he thinks that Amalfi is keeping him out of the loop and he wants to know what's going on and what Amalfi's plans are. 
He didn't like that Amalfi used D as a safe conduit in and out of the meeting. He understood it, but he didn't like it. And he was also upset that Amalfi didn't take the chance that was there if he had told everyone that he was from New York that the voting would go in his favor and he'd probably be king of the jungle. Amalfi then told him that he doesn't want to be king of the jungle because every crime that has been committed or will be committed in this jungle will be put at his feet by the earth cops and that the Okies will hold him personally responsible for everything that goes wrong while they're in the jungle. He said he only wanted a king to think that he wanted his job and that his plan about pooling our knowledge wouldn't have worked anyway. First of all, Okies wouldn't have stuck around long enough for it to work. And then there weren't scientists, there were engineers and merchants. And he goes on to say he didn't even tell them the truth, that it would take two to five years to set such a project up, and the rest of the job would take centuries to complete. Hazleton then told him he understands that Amalfi set this up so that the crowd would pick the side of the king, and that's what they did. But it was stupid, he thinks. Amalfi then told him they can't afford to stay in the jungle, and by the same time, they can't leave by themselves. So the only way they can get free of the star cluster is to be in the middle of a mass movement. Hislan goes on to say that once upon a time, he and Amalfi thought alike so he could guess what Amalfi was going to do. But they have drifted apart, and now he thinks that Amalfi is becoming more like the city fathers. That's when Amalfi told him that the change in both of them came about when D came on board because both of them are in love with her. It was at this point that Hazleton says that he want off, which was an okey law. When someone says they want off, they cannot be refused, nor can it be retracted. And Amalfi gave the expected answer. Where do you want it? On the next planet or the city's next port of call? And there was a small chance that Hazleton could pull back and retract those words so long as the city fathers did not hear about it. Amalfi then told him that as of this moment, he's no longer entitled to any knowledge of the city's policy or plans, except for what reaches you in the form of directives. So Hazleton agrees to be put off at the next port of call. And in the meantime, he will be training Karel as his successor. Amalfi then told him to get the city into an orbit around the city that they couldn't raise. That was the city that started the Baden War. They tried to call that city several times but got no answer. After Hazleton left, Amalfi got in touch with communications and had them contact the police, Lieutenant Lerner, and tell them that the cities in the jungle are planning a military action. Sergeant Anderson and his squad entered what seemed to be a dead city. Amalfi was with them, but he was also getting reports from his city, and they were telling him that the cops had showed up with the Alkalite Navy, and that the cities had lined up against them on the king's orders. When they find the first dead person in a cab, they had the city of New York set up decontamination centers, because it seemed that in this city, plague had gotten out. They saw a light in the distance, and Amalfi sent five men around to take a look at it, and then they heard an explosion. When Amalfi called out, none of those five answered. It seemed that all five men died. That's when they heard crazy laughter come from somewhere in the city, and a voice saying that they are vultures. When Amalfi got an update telling him that the cities had won their first skirmish against the cops, blowing up two cruisers and they lost four cities in the bargain. And someone turned up the spin dizzy in this city, and all the lights and everything went out. Just then, Amalfi heard over a direct transmission going out that Lieutenant Lerner had called for help, and the Earth Police answered. Amalfi kept trying to convince the lone survivor to come out, but they refused. Instead, they blew themselves up. It was at this point that all of the cities stampeded, trying to get away each city for itself. Amalfi had them send the big drone he made out in the crowd with them. Meanwhile, Amalfi had them bring aboard New York all of the good spin disease from that dead city that he could find. Later, Amalfi, Hazleton, and Carell are all standing looking at the chaos going on around them, 
And it was then that Amalfi gave out what his plan was. His plan was to place some spin disease on the planet Hern 6, just as they did with the planet He. But this time, when they fly the planet, they want to be able to control it. And once they can control it, they're going to head for Earth. Hern 6 was a little planet about the size of Mercury and just as desolate. Since Amalfi did not have enough spin disease to put on the planet to control it with precision, the control of the planet during its flight would be erratic. So while he was getting the planet ready for flight, O'Brien, who was the proxy pilot controlling the drone that was embedded in the march on Earth, would report back and tell him what was going on. The city fathers had calculated that the march would reach Earth in 155 years, 4 months and 20 days. But with each update, that time was growing shorter and shorter because several cities would leave the march when they found planets that would give them jobs. Finally, Amalfi got a report from O'Brien telling him that the march had lost two more cities, but they gained a strange city. And O'Brien went on to say he couldn't find anything like it in the files. First of all, it was huge. And second, it was totally closed up. It had a smooth hull all around it. It calls itself Lincoln, Nevada. As soon as he was finished with O'Brien, he called the city fathers and asked them how long this job was going to take. They told him another six years. He said they have to cut it to four. He then told them for them to plot a course to the lesser Magellanic cloud, one that crosses Earth's orbit. He told them he had no intention of going there, but he just wanted that course. They then told him they would have to leave within 15 days from today in order for them to reach it using the course they plotted. When they told him that, he told them to give him a course with a flat trajectory. 14 months later, he was able to start Hearn 6 on its journey. The flight of Hearn 6 through the galaxy caused a sensation because not only did it pass through habited systems, it came very close to hitting habited planets. The only other planet to fly was he and it left the galaxy. Amalfi watched as the stars zipped by because the planet was moving faster than the speed of light. As they went zipping by, they could hear people from all these near-miss planets complaining about the near-misses that they received. Amalfi didn't bother to answer any of these calls, even the ones that were sent out by Dirac. First, Earth would hear any answer he gave, and he also didn't want that strange city to hear him. The new city that had joined the march was acting very quiet and passive, and Amalfi didn't think that anyone in the march recognized it for what it was. Now that the march was within days of Earth, Amalfi sought reassurance from the city fathers that Hearn 6 would pass the orbit of Earth on exactly the same day. Amalfi wandered away for the journey to the Earth orbit to slow down while the overall journey did not slow down. And Corell seems to have come up with a way to do it. Just then, O'Brien came and told him that the cities were about to get to Earth. And so he had the direct communication system set up and he had his alternate course ready to go. The cities, as they came within the local group, which was 50 light years from Earth, had formed themselves into a large cone that was about 18 million miles long. Earth security then contacted the cities, telling them to kill their velocity and remain where they are until an official investigation of their claims has been completed. The king, of course, refused, and then Earth security responded that it was forbidden for any Oki city to approach Earth closer than 10 light years, and that current rulings forbid gatherings of Oki cities in any numbers greater than four, but that they will allow a lot of gathering as long as they stayed within the approach limit. So while Earth security was trying to get the cities to stop, the king and the cities were refusing, saying that they are citizens and they deserve justice. Meanwhile, the police began talking to each other in code. Meanwhile, the king was telling his cities that the police will not lay a finger on them as long as they don't commit an act of aggression. 
the king's plan was to go into orbit around Saturn. And then, if nothing happened, then go into orbit around Mars. Meanwhile, the odd city that was traveling in the back of the pack began to move away from the rest of the jungle. Military command was going to allow the cities to stay in orbit around Saturn while they worked things out. But the president got on the line and demanded that they do something. So command said for them to go and do Operation A, which caused some of the people to resign, saying they won't be responsible for that. The which headquarters said they will accept the resignation when the maneuver was completed. That's when police battleships began destroying the cities. Even Amalfi was stunned at the action that the president and Macmillan, the commander, took. That's when the cities began to fight back. But then the cities began to win the battle because something else was helping them. It was that strange city that was destroying the police and now had turned its attention to Earth. That's when Amalfi made his move. In the two seconds time he had, he turned the planet into a missile that hit the old city. That strange city, which turned out to be the Vegan Orbital Fort, was destroyed when the planet hit it. After destroying the Vegan Orbital Fort, Hearn 6 continued on its way. New York City had taken off from Hearn 6, which continued its journey to the Lesser Magellanic Cloud. Amalfi called for an election meeting for someone to replace Hazleton. That is where he explains that since this was a vegan military fort, military orbital fort, that they could not have fixed their machines themselves. They had to have support. That means that there is a vegan colony somewhere out there that gave them support. And if they were to find out that the vegan orbital fort was destroyed and how close it came to succeeding, that they will build a second one and the second one will succeed. So it's best to have this colony of vegans believing that their orbital fort is out there somewhere so that they don't build another one. It goes on to say that the Earth Police only have part of the figures on the Hearn 6 flight path and none on the city. He goes on to say, and the city, next time it lands, it will be staying landed because all of their equipment is old and they have no money to buy new equipment and no way of getting work to get money. The city's current trajectory will take them to the large Magellanic Cloud and at their present velocity, it will take them 20 years to get there. But because of their speed, it will take them an additional six years to slow down. He goes on to say that since the economy of the galaxy has collapsed and drug is now the new money, they can't use drugs as a money because they need drugs to stay alive. And this new monetary system will collapse. And when it does, it will take at least 300 years before a new monetary system takes its place. And in the coming economy, the Oki cities are a dying breed and will be shut down by the government, especially after what happened at Earth. So when they get to their destination, they'll pick a planet and they'll stay on it and they're far enough from the galaxy so that they can start their own little system. So during the discussion of what they should do, they finally agreed that going to the Greater Magellanic Cloud would be the good idea and that there'd probably be cities there, cities that were bindle stiffs, ones that had done things so bad in their home galaxy that they had no choice but to leave. And that was what eventually convinced Hazleton because he wants to get revenge on the city that is called Interstellar Master Traders for what they did. After the election was held, John Amalfi was mayor-elect of the new galaxy. We will stop here and continue in our next video. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe if you haven't. Give us a like, drop us a comment, and I will see you in the next video.